Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, I'm coming to you again from the Granger Sky Theater here at the Adler Planetarium. And a quick reminder that Adler is excited to offer dome show experiences on Saturdays and Sundays through the end of August. You can buy tickets for that online at adlerplanetarium.org, and we've got a link for that in the description below. Well, today we're going to be looking a little bit deeper into the summer sky, looking at some faint hidden gems that you can look for. They might take a little bit longer to find, but they're definitely well worth the effort. First, though, I do want to talk about a pretty cool thing to look for tonight in the sky, just after the sun goes down. So let's begin looking west tonight, just after sunset. Now, as the sky darkens, look for Venus in the western sky and try to spot the star Regulus, the heart of Leo the Lion, below Venus. They're separated in the sky by about one degree or about twice the width of the full moon. By the time Regulus sets at 9.45 or so here in Chicago, it should be easily seen against the darkening sky. But earlier than that, you may need binoculars to pick it out. This event is followed next Thursday when Mars is just over half a degree from Regulus in the sky. Now Mars is much dimmer than Venus, and Regulus will be lower in the twilight glow at that point. So that pairing is almost certainly going to require binoculars next Thursday. Well, on either night as the sky darkens, after you find those cool sights, look straight up and you'll see the first of our dimmer sights to find, the constellation Hercules. We're going to be drawing an imaginary line between the stars Vega and Arcturus. Now, Arcturus, you might recall, is most easily found using the arc of the Big Dipper's handle. In the hour or two after sunset this time of the year, you can find Arcturus high in the southwest. Vega is the brightest star in the Summer Triangle, and it's a little bit more than halfway up in the east. Well, these two are quite bright, and they're almost identical in brightness, so finding them even in the light polluted skies should be no problem. Let's begin at Vega, and we'll move along that line toward Arcturus. And about a third of the way along, look for this grouping of four stars, an asterism known as the Keystone of Hercules. This marks the torso of the famous hero Hercules, or Heracles, to the Greeks. The heroic nature of this part of the sky dates back even further, as this grouping of stars was often associated with the Sumerian hero Gilgamesh. Now, Hercules has ties all across the sky. Recall from last episode that the arrow of Sagittarius is pointed at Antares, the heart of Scorpius, to protect nearby Hercules. And Leo the lion represents the Nemean lion, one of the labors of Hercules. Hercules also slayed the Hydra, which has its own constellation, and the crab Cancer. Draco the dragon, which coils around the northern sky, is associated with the dragon that was guarding the Garden of the Hesperides, which Hercules slew. For such a famous hero, he's got kind of a dim constellation, but there is a bit of a stick figure you can try to trace out in the sky. Now, in the Keystone of Hercules, about two-thirds of the way along, the side that's farthest from Vega, is one of the most famous star clusters in the sky, the Hercules Globular Cluster. In a very dark sky, it is visible as a faint smudge. In binoculars, it looks like a fuzzy star. And in a telescope, you can start to resolve individual stars. The cluster is over 20,000 light years away. Even traveling at the speed of light, the light we see from the Hercules Globular Cluster tonight has been traveling for over 20,000 years since it left that cluster. But despite that distance, you can see that cluster tonight with binoculars or a small telescope, even from skies that aren't all that dark. There's another dimmer patch of sky below Hercules toward the southern horizon and above Scorpius and Sagittarius. This is filled with a not-so-famous constellation, Ophiuchus and his giant snake, Serpens. Ophiuchus covers a huge part of the sky here, and it's associated with the Greek mythical healer, Asclepius, the son of the god Apollo. Now the symbol of the rod of Asclepius, a serpent coiled around a rod, is often associated with medicine and healthcare in modern times. The serpent that Ophiuchus is holding, it's called Serpens, is an interesting constellation 
as it's the only one that isn't contiguous. It's actually split into two parts, but it's considered one constellation. Serpent's Caput, or the head of the serpent, is on the western side of Ophiuchus, and Serpent's Cauda, the tail of the serpent, is on the east. Now, it's not much to look at from a stargazing perspective, but the tail contains one of the most famous nebulae in the sky, the Eagle Nebula, or M16. This nebula is visible as a smudge to the naked eye in a dark sky. And with a very big telescope or a smaller scope and some astrophotography know-how, you can begin to see the most famous part of this nebula, the Pillars of Creation, a star-forming region made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope. Well, due to the way the modern constellation boundaries are drawn, the official boundary of Ophiuchus crosses the line of the ecliptic, meaning the sun appears to pass through part of Ophiuchus during the year. In fact, from November 30th to December 18th every year, the sun is within the boundary of Ophiuchus, a full 11 days longer than it spends in the actual zodiac constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion. So is Ophiuchus a new zodiac sign? Well, not exactly. The astrological concept of sign is defined as 12 equally sized segments of the ecliptic, not the constellations that are determined by the positions of stars and the modern scientific constellation boundaries which are based on those. But either way, Ophiuchus and Serpens are often overlooked, but they're well worth a deep dive into the sky, probably with the help of a good star chart. Well, last night the moon was in the constellation of Ophiuchus. Uh, tonight it's orbited a bit farther into Sagittarius, and on Friday is the full moon. Now July's full moon is called the Buck Moon, or the Thunder Moon. Starting the next night on Saturday, the moon has three nights passing by the bright planets Saturn and Jupiter. We're going to be focusing on these two in the next episode as Saturn reaches opposition on August 1st and Jupiter on August 19th. But as the moon passes through this pairing, you've got a great chance to steal a glimpse at these beautiful objects in our solar system. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.